kids of any type are vulnerable, again, just because they're out there doing goofy stuff and put, you know, that, uh, things that adults would not do that put them uh, in harm's way in terms of getting a traumatic brain injury. Think about the child who is, falls in the playground and wakes up on the ground and nobody's there and then goes home crying. Think about the child who falls off a bike and gets dazed. It may not become apparent that they uh, have had a brain injury until they start to go to school, for example, and start um, have some behavioural difficulties and learning difficulties at school. I believe our early diagnosis is uh, crucial to a, a child's uh, well-being uh, for their development. So making sure that you don't just uh, downplay just a bump on the head it will be important. Certainly there's clear evidence emerging that children injured in those vulnerable years between particularly the ages of one and uh, in the early preschool years uh, are more vulnerable in terms of um, uh, their, the, the long-term consequences of the injury because of the implications for their development. Infants oftentimes just don't even do as well as uh, uh, other age populations with regards to recovery following traumatic brain injury. So uh, we all need to be vigilant in identifying that and, and of course preventing it before it even starts. Start providers spend a significant amount of time with young children, supervising, teaching, observing, and interacting. Having such a dominant role in the lives of children in their care, they are likely to be more aware of the subtle and not so subtle changes in their cognition, personality, behavior, and how well these changes correlate with expected developmental milestones. Most traumatic brain injuries, or TBIs, are closed head injuries that can be mild, moderate, or severe. Children with mild injuries often appear normal. More severe injuries can result in coma. A traumatic brain injury of any severity can cause permanent neuropsychological changes that can have a devastating impact on the remainder of a child's life. A traumatic brain injury is an injury to the brain that results from basically the brain being rattled around inside the skull. And this can happen when you get very, when you get hit very hard by something or you hit something very hard. And if you imagine the brain having the consistency of formed jello in the natural state, what happens is as your head gets jerked forward, the brain sort of compresses on itself as it gets jerked backwards. It stretches, and if you think of what makes up the brain, a lot of nerve cells, it's those nerve cells that are being stretched and squeezed um, that are injured and it can lead to problems. Traumatic brain injury is a really broad term. Um, all we use it to indicate is a insult to the brain, which doesn't have to be direct, that results in an altered state of consciousness. That altered state of consciousness doesn't need to be a loss of consciousness. It can be a period of confusion. It can be a period of um, some immediate memory loss. And that's, I think, probably one of the big challenges in, in treating this is it's not just people who lose consciousness that have a head injury. The three typical ways or the most prevalent ways that children get brain injury are basically uh, falls because kids are at high risk, their toddlers are running around, they fall a lot. Uh, they trip downstairs and things like that. So falls is the number one way that kids get an injury. The second one is transportation accidents of some sort. Uh, kids in cars, kids on bikes, uh, things that are moving vehicles. Uh, and the third way is assault. Um, kids are at high risk because they're vulnerable to be assaulted uh, by other people, adults, caretakers. Uh, ADHD, those kids are always doing something. Um, well, the kids that have hyperactivity and impulsivity they tend to do high-risk activities, and they're at risk for a brain injury, but if they haven't had one, they're just at risk. Of the kids uh, that go in the hospital with a brain injury, about 40% of them are between zero and four years of age. Of the 400,000 children a year who are brought into emergency rooms following injury to the head, 29,000 are hospitalized, and 3,000 die. 
Oftentimes, brain injuries are not well evaluated in the emergency department, particularly when there are more life-threatening injuries. Even if brain injuries receive attention in the ER, there is very little follow-up on aftercare instructions and a tendency of caregivers to assume there is no ongoing effect of the injury, especially if the child appears to be normal. This means that many young children are not identified as having had a brain injury, which can impact their development and their life.